Good day. This is your PowerPoint called Reaction Mechanisms, and we're going to go through it, and you're going to learn a fair amount of vocabulary, and I think you'll find it fairly straightforward. So it turns out that many reactions do not occur in a single step. A balanced chemical equation can often give a misleading idea about what's actually going on in the reaction. If you see that you have three or more particles according to an equation that have to collide at the same time and place, it's very unlikely that will happen in one step. So if you look at your coefficients and if it's not one of this material and one of another material getting together, let's say it's two and one, often more than one step is going to be involved. And the substeps create what's called a reaction mechanism. Now, generally, you're not going to have to figure out the reaction mechanism. One will be given, and then you have to be able to interpret it. Now, quite often, it'll be made up of a series of steps, and then we get the overall reaction. And the common kind of question is to give you everything but one step or everything but the overall reaction. So we have the overall reaction at the top. We can see why it's unlikely to happen in one step. Because right here, it says there's four moles of that, one mole of that. That's five things to collide at the same time and place. Not likely. So we have step one, now we have step two, and now we have step three. So first of all, when we look at this, we see there's an HBr right there. There's another HBr there, and there's two HBrs. So all of these things on this side make up the reactants, and that totaled 4-HBr. You go down here and you see there's 1O2. Then you might say, hey, how come these things aren't included in the overall reaction? Well, you can see the HOBr was made and then used up, and the HOBr was made and then used up in the next step. So it's something that actually cancels out. And you can see that these are the final products that end up over here. So anything that's made in one step and used up in a later step, doesn't have to be the next step, but used up somewhere later, is called an intermediate. Now, the other thing to notice from this mechanism is it says slow and fast and fast. And the rate determining step determines the rate of the overall reaction. And automatically the slowest step is the rate determining step. So in this case, step one would be our rate determining step. So this slide is analyzing what we saw in the previous slide. It says there's a graph on the whiteboard. And so I may make up a video for that at some point and have you view it after watching this. A catalyst, we talked about in an earlier video, it's a chemical that is used, it's used essentially as a reactant, but by the end of the overall reaction, it's regenerated. And so we use it up, get it back, so there's no net difference in the amount from the start to the finish. There are other things we're going to say about catalysts later on. And the intermediate is kind of the opposite. It's something that's made in one step and then used up in a later step. Activated complexes are not included in reaction mechanisms. They occur at the peak. They're a very unstable chemical arrangement, and it can spill back towards the reactants or forward into the products. And so if we're comparing these things, an intermediate would be more stable than activated complex. Catalysts and intermediates are included in reaction mechanisms. Activated complexes are not. And none of these things are included in an overall reaction. So this one says, hey, we're going to give you a mechanism. Tell me about the intermediates. So here we have step one, step two, step three. And up above, we see that we have an overall reaction. Well, there's our 2NO, and it appears in the overall reaction, so it can't be in the intermediate. Here we have N2O2. We don't see it as a product. In fact, we see it used up in the next step, so it's got to be an intermediate. 
hydrogen reactant. Here we see we have N2O, and then it's used up, so it's the other intermediate. Water is going to be one of the products, and these characters in our last step are products. So N2O2 and N2O are intermediates because they're made in one step and used, um, used up in a later step. So we have another example. And let's see what we have to do here. Well, we got SO2. And again, we haven't asked you to figure out overall reaction, but here's SO2 and the B2O5 and the next B2O4. So what you can see is an oxygen went from B2O5 to the SO2. And then we see the B2O4 comes in here. And then we have half a mole oxygen comes in and we get our B2O5. So overall, SO2 reactant, O2 reactant, SO3 product. The V2O5 is a catalyst. It got used in step one, regenerated in step two. V2O4 is an intermediate, reduced in step one, but used in step two. So that's our catalyst, and that's our intermediate. So hopefully you see those terms are fairly straightforward, and we'll start looking at them in terms of potential energy and other things like that.